Why, hello there! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, my name is Mr. Dogboat333, and welcome back to the New Campaign Trail. Now, last time we hopped into New Campaign Trail, we played 1972D, which seemed to just be a normal Nixon versus Connolly campaign, but instead we played as communists and end up getting 5% of the votes. We're playing a bit more of a traditional mod in that. I don't think there's going to be any crazy twists and turns with this. But, I want to go ahead and uh, have some fun. Uh, this is 1948 Identity War. The name is kind of cheesy, I'm not going to lie. But the mod itself is actually pretty cool. So, we're going to be hopping in and playing that. I'm going to pause the music just to avoid getting another huh, copyright claim. Or potentially getting the video restricted in country, because uh, my 1972D video actually ended up being blocked in Russia of all places because of uh, I think it was a Billy Joel song that played at the end. So apologies to all the Russians who are watching, who are unable to watch the uh, last video. That's why you should have this video sponsored. Nord I don't. Have, I'm not sponsored by NordVPN. Um, that would be a fucking amazing tie-in if I was. I'm actually sponsored by ExpressVPN. And that's also a joke, unfortunately. <clears throat> to say the last three years have been chaotic would be an understatement. With the world in an abyss of uncertainty over whether to remain somewhat united or split off into factions, the United States find itself in a crossroad, one that will shake the world to its core. The New Deal Coalition now torn asunder. All that's left is an all-out war between President Wallace and Governor Thurman for the fate of what was once the party of those such as Jackson and Wilson. The Republicans, who are not exempt from this factionalism, find themselves trying to mend fences in an attempt to capture the White House after four devastating defeats during a rising tide of conservatism and isolationism not unlike three decades before. After a rough primary, Robert Taft looks to bring traditional Republican values back into the limelight. So we have three different candidates we have uh, we can choose between. We have Henry Wallace, who must continue to advocate for his diplomatic foreign relations with the Soviets, while emphasizing the strength of his domestic credentials if he wants to mount any form of a comeback. With a party on the brink of disaster, it's all up to him to keep it alive. To avoid further splintering an already fractious party, Robert Taft must persuade the public that isolationism is best while balancing domestic policy in an era ruled by the New Deal. If successful, he could very well shift the Overton window back to the right. And then finally, Strom Thurmond's goal is to hold on to the South if he wishes to establish his new fragile party. Yet there's also the opportunity to deadlock this race at great risk by undercutting the Republicans. Got an interesting uh, dynamic going on here. This mod was made by these cool people. Uh, check it out. Check it out. Yeah. We're going to continue. And I think to start off, we're going to be playing, I think, is probably the underdog. And it's a really hard game to figure out. Um, Henry Wallace, a Democrat from the home state of Iowa. Wallace was FDR's vice president, and I believe 40 to 44. Um, he was nominated after John Nance Gardner didn't want to run for VP again. And he was potentially going to be, uh, there was, he was in the running be the VP again in 1944. But since one, FDR was getting sick and sick, sicker, so people had to consider who, who would step in. Wallace was kind of a borderline communist. Um, that's how my professor uh, described him. Um, and so they end up, it was torn between uh, Wallace and a Dixiecrat. And as a compromise, they end up going with Harry Truman. And Truman ended up becoming president after FDR died. But uh, in this mod... In this timeline, Henry Walls continues as VP, and here we are. Ever since ascending to the presidency in 1945, Henry Agard Wallace has found his grip on the party akin to holding sand in one's fingers. 
His liberal economic policies and progressive stance on the Negro Rights Act have completely alienated conservatives, many of whom left to join the state's rights party along with Southerners, throwing literal rotten fruit at him. While moderates in the party establishment want nothing to do with his radical ideas of socialized health care, among other things. Even worse, both internationalists and isolationists continue to hound his foreign policy, for either seeming too soft or too hard in these times of potential nuclear Armageddon. Poor old Wallace just can't catch a break. To win this election, Wallace can't play it safe, as that's a Roosevelt's luxury. If he wishes to do the unthinkable and hold on to his job, he'll have to enact bold moves and take risky gambles to make an impossible comeback. Otherwise, the very fate of a Negro and the lives of many will be swept away by the oligarchy of big business and prejudice rage of the American fascist. Seems incredible, like I took a bite and blew me out of my mouth. Don't make me hungry, Kev. You're making me hungry, man. Let me see. I don't know very much about thermonuclear, or Thurman. You know, he was a racist and this filibuster guy, but beyond that, I don't know much about him. Um, I might take a bit of a diversion once we get that. Uh, so we have three picks of running mates. Estes Kefaufer? I probably didn't pronounce that correctly. Uh, Harry Truman. And Eleanor Roosevelt. I guess I haven't played too much around with Truman or Roosevelt. But I'm going to go ahead and go with Estes here. A rare New Deal Democrat from the South, Representative Casey Estes Kefaufer has proven to be a massive support of your agenda, rising to prominence within the party with his enthusiastic support of your national health bill. Now, the version of funds towards the antitrust division, his efforts to fight corruption both locally and nationally have earned the love of ordinary men and the unfortunate ire of the party machine. Geographically, Kefaufer may allow you to pick off one or two southern states, which, with the way things seem, could be the difference between defeat and victory. On the other hand, he's a, a national unknown to the public eye, so outside of his immediate area, he won't help at all, and would double down on a complete rejection of the establishment, which may only further divide an already apprehensive party. Still, if you really want to be seen as a grassroots man of the people, Estes would certainly cinch the idea. Well, let's give it a shot. We'll do default winner take all, and we'll continue. Let's take a look at the map as it starts right now. Not good. We get 90 electoral votes if the election was held today. But luckily the election isn't being held today. So we'd have Tennessee, Minnesota, New York, Mass, Rhode Island. That's really about it. The big policies you need to keep in mind are foreign policy, the Negro Rights Act, the United States Health Service, union influence, and the so uh, attitudes toward the Soviet Union. Well, here we are. August 1st, 1945. As you run a hand through your hair, the sweat dripping from your forehead is enough to stain the paper beneath you till it's nearly illegible. All you have to do is sign it, and wherever you choose will become a smoldering ash, perhaps even uninhabitable for the rest of your life. The Manhattan Project, you've Push Roosevelt to pursue, now leaves you in a crisis of morality, as you must decide on how to use the atomic bomb against Japan. This very choice will define you for all time. What will you choose, President Henry Agard Wallace, and more importantly, who will he damn to the fires of hell? Starting off strong, damn. Well, there's only one place we can target if we want to destroy Japan's capacity to wage war. The city of Hiroshima. An area of endless factories that must be eradicated from the face of this planet, even if it should cost the lives of thousands. The result is nothing short of devastating, all those lives snuffed out in mere minutes, and you find yourself both in awe and horror at the true devastation brought by the superweapon. I honestly don't know how if this affects anything, but I'll just do what our timeline did and then take it from there. I don't know if that affected anything except we're now behind in Tennessee so that might have hurt us slightly hmm feels bad January, uh, February 20th, rather, 1948. It's official. Senate Maj Minority Leader Albin Barkley has thrown down the gauntlet in the upcoming primary. How will, will you respond to this and, more importantly, keep the party establishment behind you? 
Perhaps I can call in my old friend James Farley to help me smooth relations with the establishment. He's the one's on the chair of a national committee, and he's better suited to deal with them than me. Initially reluctant to re-enter politics, after hours of discussion, Farley agrees to appeal to the party machine in your steed. Thanks to your history and similar policy positions. Alright, so I, I've played this a couple of times, so I kind of have a grasp on what we need to do. Um, we need a campaign in California, Pennsylvania, maybe one visit in New Jersey, and Florida. Potentially Virginia? It might be possible to win Virginia. We'll start with a sole visit in New Jersey. In a controversial decision re regarding McCollum versus the Board of Education, run by your first pick, Philip Lafayette, the use of public school administration in support of religious instruction classes was deemed unconstitutional. Any thoughts? You know, it's not my place to judge on the Supreme Court's decision, no matter our personal feelings, we must respect their words and follow the laws set by our highest judiciary court in the land. A very uncontroversial statement, and considering your record, that's an early Christmas miracle. We'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, how's that change things? We're losing even more now. We're losing even more now. That does feel very bad. Despite your best attempts to undercut the man, Barclay's candidacy has gained traction among the party, and in this primary, has become a legitimate threat. Now, the only question is, what's your strategy to take him down? To make matters worse, the contest only threatens to further embolden Southern Democrats to walk away from a party that is currently eating itself. This could be an issue. I think it, it'd be best to focus on keeping party insiders in line before they can defect to Bar Barclay or leave entirely. They're the only ones to worry about, and without them... We have no hopes of retaining what's left of this party. I can already see the signs that a few remaining loyalists to the par Democratic Party, like Harry Byrd and Richard Russell, are eyeing the door to the SRP. Smart move. Best to focus on traitors who could undercut your candidacy. While they can't stand you, those who appear to be ready to leave are placated. Mostly because they're, you're almost certainly going to be losing this election anyway. And we'll take it. We'll take what we can get. The SRP, the States' Rights Party. It's uh, Thurman's little break-off here. Um, I'll visit Cali. April 18th, 1948. Results of Italy's recent elections make w made waves in the news following the slim victory of the popular Democratic Front, making the country the first in the world to democratically elect communists to lead them. This one will be funny. I don't know if it'll work, though. Although we may not all agree politically, I'm proud to congratulate Palmiro Togliatti on his victory and hope that America's relationship with the European nations remains in good order. A few further anti-communists criticize the response, but mostly this is seen as the standard response to such an event. Some do note your avoidance of a Soviet election meddling. Quick, get the CIA. That's not established. I think Truman is the one who establishes the CIA. So we don't have a CIA. So we have nothing to stop this. <laughs> Thankfully, not every major Democrat has abandoned you. Even after rejecting the offer to be your running mate, Florida Senator and New Deal liberal Claude Pepper has invited you to hold a rally in his home state. Will you accept? Well, of course, we need to show the Democrats are united. I'll speak about the need to keep the New Deal policies in place and further expand Social Security. Only under a Walls administration can we continue the legacy of FDR. Way to go, Walls. You actually managed to get the housing crowd on your side. They may not enjoy you all that much, but the promise of keeping the New Deal in place is enough to control many, including a young, hopefully young prospect named George Corley Wallace, back under the Democratic banner. Cafal for a size quietly in relief. Wallace? George Wallace? That is funny. Um, we'll get working in Pennsylvania. We'll head over Penn. May 14th, 1948. Israeli nationalists have just issued an official declaration of independence with an Arab coalition preparing an invasion as we speak. Will you take sides in developing in this developing conflict? 
well, not only do I want to recognize Israel, but I also want the U.S. to be the first one to do so. I'll call Prime Minister Ben-Gurion immediately and pledge our full diplomatic support. Recognition leads to celebration across the Jewish community. The majority of Americans support this decision in the wake of the Holocaust. Hawks admire your resolve, even if many diplomats believe it alienated the Arab world. 1948 election was actually pretty mad. Both Americans and Soviets are fucking around trying to support their respective sides. Yeah. Yeah, it was nuts. <clears throat> Ooh. Your spies in the DNC have informed you Barclay is attempting to meet with his DNC chair. With DNC chair, Howard McGrath to discuss a backroom deal before the upcoming convention. <laughs> no way in hell that's happening. I'll call Congress in a session to keep Barclay from even coming near McGrath until the convention. With Barkley distracted by his Senate Minority Leader's duties, he's unable to coordinate with McGrath. We have one less worry to deal with. And what turns out to be an unexpected boon, this gridlocked Republican Congress ends up making fools of themselves before a fed-up public who reevaluate just who's responsible for their troubles. <laughs> Works out beautifully. Um, we'll take a visit to Florida real quick. After holding back a challenge from Barkley and even facing a draft O. Douglas movement, you managed to secure your renomination on the 10th ballot. How will, will you attempt to re-energize a weary and cynical party? We'll reflect on where we stand today. Although fractured, the Democratic parties continue to fight for peace and equality both domestically and abroad. We'll bring a united healthcare service and civil rights for our fellow man and women who have been held back by a do-nothing, know-nothing, fix-nothing Congress who refuse to lift a finger for the average American. Wallop em, Wallace. Your choice to recognize the Democratic Republic of Vietnam in 1945, which served as a major influence on the developing nation, currently embroiled in internal strife between its nationalist and communist parties, remains controversial even now along with forcing your, the Fourth French Republic to concede in its, in, its, in its negotiations before war could break out, you have strained your relationship with many Western European powers. Will you attempt to regain your favor? We may not agree on Vietnam, but I know the regime has been looking to overthrow fascist Spain. Perhaps in that area of agreement, we can repair a relationship. I'll speak directly to Vincent Arroy on the idea of toppling Francisco Franco's regime. It seems this rocky relationship will survive after all. The temptation to take down another fascist, dangerous fascist state is enough to keep France on, keep France on board and bring French Americans to your side, even if Britain is now super needled at being ignored. Well, what are you going to do? We'll go back to Pennsylvania. There we go. Against the wishes of establishment, you've chosen re the relatively unknown Tennessee representative Estes Kefalfer, a loyal supporter of, and massive anti-corruption advocate. Do you have anything to say about your reasoning for choosing him? Well, Kefalfer has been a loyal supporter of my agenda since day one. He's one of the few New Deal liberals from the South that's willing to join my ticket. Without him, vital states like Tennessee, North Carolina will be impossible to win. Although it sickens them to say it, they admit your reasoning is somewhat sound. Biting their tongues on this one, the establishment remains silent at your choice of running mate. With the return of veterans and development of a potential housing crisis, currently leaving a shortage of homes for many, what was your stance on federal funds being allocated to, low, to produce low-income housing for the needy? What's my stance? My stance is that this should have happened years ago. It's a travesty that we as a country have not secured housing for those who fought and died to defend democracy itself. We need a society for the working man that made the United States, and I'll call for it immediately. Unlike the Republican Congress who continues to sit on their hands as people are left on the streets. Where's the Kefauver from? That's such a strange name. Uh, I don't know about the name. The senator is from Kentucky. This guy's from Kentucky. Or, not Kentucky. Tennessee. He's from Tennessee. Your fiery rhetoric helps galvanize those in need of such housing. 
Some of your core supporters begin to spread the term common society, and it soon catches on in small circles within your base. Even better, your blistering criticism of Congress have made people pay attention to the two-headed Republican elephant. Okay, how are we doing right now? Got 108. Not bad. We're pretty close to taking the lead in Washington and Montana. Same with... Uh, I'm blanking the name, Missouri. We have a lead in Iowa now. Almost have a lead in New Hampshire. Have a lead in Connecticut now. We have a bit of ways to pick up, uh, quite a gap to pick up in Pennsylvania, though. So I'm heading over there. Questions have arised from Congress on the use of military funds from your unconventional foreign policy that has left them skeptical, to say the least. How will you reassure them so they don't cut your funding? I was hoping, I was planning to hold back on this until later, but I'll reveal the U.S.'s plan to fund the KMT in hopes of stopping China from fully devolving into communism and becoming a hostile nation. A cut in the budget that could very well destroy the possibility. It's originally a barbarian name, but it Americanized. Interesting. Hmm. Seems Congress's hatred of potential communist China was just enough to ignore your sympathies towards the Soviets, as they've hesitantly signed off on this year's budget. Oh, Bavarian. Bavarian, that makes a lot more sense. Okay. In spite of your damnedest attempts to block it, the Taft Hartley Act has passed over a year ago, and from that, many labor unions, once behind, you have lost faith, and even considering just sitting out, out for the election, seeing the Democrats is ineffective. Fucking out of questions are out tonight, for real. I'll speak with Walter Ruther, the president of UAW. He knows I'm a man of the workers, and with his support, we can regain their faith against the ta Taft, who would only destroy what progress we've made. And to sweeten the deal, I'll pressure the FBI to investigate who nearly killed him months ago. Going straight to the source himself, Ruther agrees to get the unions back behind you, along with publicly endorsing your campaign despite still recovering from the assassination attempt in April. We'll do it. We'll take that. Nice boost in Union States. Um, I'll back to Penn. His name is Keith Haber. Interesting. Going back to Penn. Some good news in all of this, you've recently received a slew of endorsements from the a American Labor Party, the Socialist Party of America, the Socialist Labor Party, Socialist Workers Party, World Socialist Party of the United States, the Liberal Party of New York, and the American Communist Party. Do you want to use them in any way? While I appreciate these endorsements, perhaps discretion will be a preferable option. Many already see me as a radical leftist, so calling attention to this may only reinforce that narrative. No harm, no foul. One of your more controversial proposals, the United States health system has continuously failed to gain traction even among your own party. The public remains unsure, unions worry it will destroy their benefits, and everyone outside your circle sees it as too close to communism. We cannot falter now if we want to convince the public of this idea. Rebranding it as an extension of the New Deal could do the trick. Connecting it to other such universally popular programs like Social Security and including much of my predecessor's rhetoric to convince them of the idea. Approaching this from a different angle might have been the right idea. Using the ever popular New Deal to push this has begun to convince a number of naysayers, even in states such as Kentucky and Missouri. Kefalfer also uses his own connections get many in Tennessee politics to endorse this measure, opening up the South to this radical new. This radical new. Um, all it over to California. Speaking of California, polls show we're struggling there. A vile state ain't if you have any hopes of winning. How will you rebound your image to win back support? <clears throat> we need to shoot an ad. Maybe alongside a famous Californian celebrity, this young rising star and New Deal supporter, Ronald Reagan, seems like a good choice. Let's call him. This is one of those RNG ones. <laughs> um, 
make sure I did not select the right one. Yeah, fun fact, Ronald Reagan used to be a New Deal supporter and a head of a union. Uh, I, apologize. I don't know what the consensus is on me using inspect element to figure out what the right code is to select, but I'm going to do this because if we don't get all these RNG questions right, we're not winning the selection. So let's do it. Though not your biggest fan, this Ho the Hollywood celebrity eventually agrees to shoot an ad alongside you. His charismatic demeanor instantly sways many, especially with his... Now is a time for choosing line. On a negative note, it seems that Reagan himself is taking serious flack from, for this decision from conservatives. <laughs> uh, radical liberal Ronald Reagan. If I didn't trust you as a friend, I'd call you a liar in the Reagan thing. It is true, you can look it up. With Taft's candidacy, many Eastern establishment Republicans seemed primed to jump ship, especially one of its primary leaders, Harold Strassen, who's always been an ardent supporter of a New Deal. Persuading him to your side may very well be possible and extremely lucrative. Well, if you want to convince a man like Strassen, it has to be done face-to-face. -face. I'll meet with him and pledge to continue our popular New Deal policies, such as a universally popular Social Security, along with a potential cabinet position should he be willing to join against Taft's radical conservatism. I was touch and go for a while, but after offering a recent vacancy in your cabinet, Harold Strassen has agreed to support you and become your new Secretary of Commerce. A few partisans are miffed at the news. Well, they can... Shut up. How about that? Only had K away from dumping water and you had beautiful, beautiful. Chosen to visit Pennsylvania, is this correct? Yes. September 3rd, 1940, with Texas looking closer than ever before, a young potential senator named Lyndon Baines Johnson has claimed he could guarantee Texas's vote for your re-election. In exchange, he requests your support against, in the case of fraud against Coke Stevenson to a very suspicious runoff primary. Johnson's a rare New Deal Democrat in the South and far more supportive of me than Stevenson. Seeing his win is quickly is tantamount to keeping that state a de Democratic sanctuary. Little boy to my bitch got me. Boy, did my... What? What are you talking about? Oh, so, um... Zara Evan, meet, meet Kevin. Two of the, both the Irishmen. Oh, Playboy Cardi. I should have figured it was Cardi. Um... That is not the one we want. There we go. A week leader of the state party votes 29 to 28 to certify Johnson's victory. Plus, it seems Johnson was speaking the truth. As reports from flashing something called Jumbo to your opposition have convinced them to vote for you. Something Kefaufer, once he finds out, it remains silent, but is clearly uncomfortable with his decision. My friends, we have sexually harassed our way to winning Texas. Beautiful. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Your Negro Rights Act has continuously been shut down, not only by the opposition, but also by many moderates in your own party, who see it as the ultimate death nail for, in the South for Democrats should come to Congress. I don't... I haven't figured out what the right option for this is yet. But I think now is not the time to play politics. We must take a principled stance on the rights of every man and and vote to finally make America the land of life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, just as our forefathers originally intended. This is a necessary piece of legislation that will be abandoned by Taft in a heartbeat. Bold words, but that's all they are. It does help rally civil rights advocates to your side, like the NAACP, but very few in the establishment are swayed. I think that helps us a little bit, though. We're starting to close some of the gaps in these places, um, five points away. Mm, four points in Cali. All out of Florida. Go to Florida. Once again, you find yourself at odds with General MacArthur, who has continuously criticized your foreign policy and even attempted to run against you. The man has even gone so far as to recently put you on blast repeatedly in his speeches. Will you finally attempt to deal with his pain in the neck? We can't do m too much now without angering the public. 
How about I send MacArthur on a mission to the nation of Korea to guarantee its safety against an increasingly antagonistic China? Maybe after this election is over, I can finally get rid of him. Thankfully, MacArthur is actually overjoyed to go on this mission, as he had wanted to oversee the new territory back in 45 when China became a new threat to the newly established Democratic Republic of Korea. You may have to keep an eye on him so he doesn't start any new problems, but your actions do help satisfy a fearful public. Here we go. In recent news, the House Un-American in... I forget what... It's House Un-American Committee, I think it is. The HUAC. Has continued mo considered moving their next investigation to internal communist influence. Maybe you should consider... You're writing your concession speech now, unless you can persuade the HUAC otherwise. No, no, no. They're, I know they're likely communist in the Democratic Party. If we let this happen right now, we're fucked. We need to divert them towards something else. Uh, per perhaps the KKK's influence in our political system. Um, specifically, the States' Rights Party could serve as better bait. Let's see. It was closed for a moment, but with a recent increase in lynchings as a result of your civil rights stance and evidence that the former organization funds this new party, J Edward J. Hart agrees to focus on this specific group for now. As a bonus, the SRP suffers a minor blow politically. I'll take that. We're still six points away. We could dig away from that, potentially. Now, this is the new campaign trail, Zar Evan. I'm playing a mod right now. I will do Pennsylvania. The Military Selective Service Act, after several delays from isolationist efforts, is set to be voted on in Congress. I will instruct the Democratic Party to vote. Let's not say anything and delegate this to Barkley. As a show of trust that the Democrats are united, there are no hard feelings from the primary. Nice instincts there, Wallman. Seems your efforts to patch things up with Barkley have earned his goodwill and some extra campaigning in his region. On another note, the bill passes with ease. Beautiful. We are very close to winning in Pennsylvania. Beautiful. Um, California, we still got some work, but we'll get there. Unfortunately, your endorsement from the American Communist Party has led to further accusations that you are a communist, and that the party itself no only houses the Red Menace. Is there anything you would like to say to defend yourself? Well, the ACP is free to endorse me, but I'm not following their line. If they want to follow my line, I say, God bless them. Yeah, we were playing as the Democratic Party. We're playing as the Democratic Party right now, at least. Most see this is a bit too soft, but it keeps the worst of these criticisms from hounding you any more than they already are. We'll take it. How are we doing electoral vote wise? We're still behind in TAF, uh, behind against TAF, but we're closing the gap a little bit. And a lot of these states are really close. Pennsylvania, not as close anymore, actually. But we're at New Hampshire, Connecticut. Close in Wisconsin. Close in Iowa. Close in Missouri. Pretty close in Kentucky. Close in Florida. Close in New Mexico. Close over here. We've been striking distance on the West Coast. Love how we jumped our way into Texas. It's like 1948. It is. How are we losing Cali, though? California actually used to be pretty close. Oh, campaign in Florida. California used to be a pretty big swing state. We had uh, Republican governors for a while. They were pretty liberal Republicans, but still Republicans nonetheless. Key advisor Hubert Humphrey suggested challenging Senator Taft to a debate as a last-ditch effort attempt to swing the polls back to your favor. That's fair enough, Ben. You're, you're good, man. You're good. Um, I respect your idea, Hubert. I don't think it'll amount to much. Best to focus on more campaign stops in the South. Or perhaps a missed opportunity. Your whistle stop tour has shown some gains across the South. I think that's... Yeah, we're doing really well in Florida now. That's actually going to help us a fair bit. Speaking of California, another prominent Republican who may just be willing to support you, Governor Earl Warren, will be your... In your neck of the woods this week, will you attempt to earn his support as well? Well, obviously I know Warren's ambitions and his policy positions thanks to his time as governor. 
let's promise him a Federal Highway Act should he come out with a sweeping endorsement of my, my campaign. That seemed to do the trick. Warren, who was one of the first proponents for a highway system, as shown in his very state, agreed to endorse you to enact what he sees as vital legislation for this country that has no chance with Taft in charge. Ooh, our election is going to be weird as fuck. I already know who I'm going to vote for. Ooh, you and Kev can get into discussion about this. Imagine voting elections up north. Ooh. Um, Mid-Atlantic's a little closer than I'd like, but we'll go back to Florida for now. <clears throat> Once again, the topic of Supreme Court justice is up in the air. Despite being stonewalled for two years after Chief Justice Harlan Stone's death, your advisors recommend and nominating candidate as it could be a win-win scenario. The only choice is, who will you choose? Well, there's only one man who can't possibly re be rejected. Francis Biddle, the man who prosecuted the Nuremberg Trials. He's practically a hero among the people. Oh, come on! In a 50-50 vote, Biddle has failed th thanks to the fact that no vice president is currently in office. Immediately, both Republicans and the state's right party received national backlash for refusing to accept a household name like Biddle, all for the singular purpose... Of spiting you. Hmm. Feels bad, man. How are we doing? Doing a little better. Alright. One of your more controversial creations since your ascension to the presidency, the World Intelligence Bureau has repeatedly come under fire by Taft, who accuses your organization of further unneeded expansion of presidential powers, claiming that since they only answer to you, they pr lack proper oversight. As much as I disagree, if I was just to flat out deny the accusation, it makes me look bad. Perhaps I can respond to this by having one of my trusted party members propose an amendment to the vote on the National Security Act, but we'll see it run by the first Secretary of Defense instead of myself. George Marshall appreciates your vote of confidence, and he managed to score a one-up on Taft by pulling the rug out on of one of his own proposed amendments with your own. There we go. We're doing pretty well in Joycey now. Penn we're still struggling in. We're about to pick up the gap in Florida. I think my big struggle right now is Cali, so I'll take a visit there just in case. The sting of Japanese internment remains strong after your predecessor's actions. Many have reasonably suggested potential compensation for this loss of property and state for these Japanese Americans harmed by their forced imprisonment. Do you agree? This might just be the opportunity I need to go forth on a plan I had years ago. With the Southwest so sparsely populated, we can compensate and voluntarily relocate many displaced Japanese Americans to these states in exchange for their help to foster more of an agricultural center in these barren lands. Let's give it a shot. Most offered the opportunity, accepted, and eventually a ton of new farms are developed. Soon, a federal relocation service passes through Congress, and the WAA is established as a new public works program. The good news is that Californians will be rid of this problem. The bad news is that these the states, where they settled permanently, lost the votes of local population. So that's going to help. It's going to hurt a lot in Arizona. It actually doesn't help that much in California, so that's kind of... Eh... the country reaching a fever, fever pitch as election day inches closer and closer, your advisors believe that if there's ever a good a time as any to go for broke, now would be the time. Well, my attacks will be directed not towards the callous conservatism Robert Taft, but the Republican Congress itself, who since its inception has cut 750,000 people from Social Security in service of their special interests. Just as Hoover before them, they only serve big business, and not once think of the common man. Ouch. The Republicans are left grasping for straws at the mention of Social Security. 
and it's been made much better. It's made much better when Taff himself responds in an even worse way about the need to privatize. <laughs> there we go. Um, God, where should I campaign? All campaign in Florida. It seemed in the final hours of his election, Thurman has decided to launch every available piece of slander's ammunition at you. Thanks to a disloyal Democrat on your staff, he's revealed evidence that you were involved with a Russian mystic named Nicholas Rorick and accuses you of being a secret Soviet spy. Is, isn't that the guy who can lead to bet in Kaiserreich? I think that's the guy who can lead to bet in Kaiserreich. I just realized that. We can admit that we're a secret Soviet spy sent by Joseph Stalin. <laughs> that's funny. We need to fire back, but in a strategic manner. I hope someone leak the information of his illegitimate child to the news. Meanwhile, I'll tackle this scandal in a speech explaining that, while I had a correspondence with Rorik, he was a political moderate who fled Russia before its convergence to communism, and he by no means has influenced, has influenced any of my political beliefs. Gary Adams was my neighbor. Gary Adams, isn't that the guy who said the ad word on Twitter? Although many remain hesitant, your speech has managed to slow down the bleeding poll numbers. And soon after the news of Thurman's scandal hits the masses, the public eventually turns their eyes towards this shocking, new shocking story. Hmm. While traveling by car on the so-called Wallace Wheelie crisscrossing the entire country, Kefalfer begins to explain an idea he had, a new committee focused on combating corruption in government, and he wants to lead it even as vice president. We both know the job doesn't have much to do at the end of the day. I can't simply sit back while corruption tears our democracy apart of democracy. What do you say? This is where it gets interesting. Uh, this is a bit of a branching path. We already have enough committees as it is. This is entirely unnecessary. Instead, I believe you would be better served taking on a larger role in the White House. Perhaps we can even set up an office for you to help with important tasks. This is where it gets weird. Kefalfer is less than pleased at the response, even taking a separate car on your next stop. Unfortunately, this spells disaster when it's rammed by an intoxicated driver, killing Estes in the process. Even more shockingly, your primary opponent, Albin Barkley, volunteers to take up the mantle as your running mate, wanting to bring the party together. Yikes. Also, I know Gary Adams is like a IRA guy. I just like to call him as a guy I just like to call him the guy who said the N word on Twitter, because that's that's funny to me that he did that. So our vice president's dead. Our vice presidential candidate's dead. We just have this guy now. But finally, all your efforts have paid off. After many long negotiations, the U.S.-Soviet peace accords are set to be signed today. This guarantees the unification of Korea and Austria into single states and pledges free and fair democratic elections for Poland, Romania, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and Bulgaria in the next four years. Yes! People have doubted my efforts for so long, but it's all finally paid off. The world is now one step closer to ending this division running rampant through the souls of the people. Now more than ever, these accords prove the idea of isolationism has no place in this new era, where countries of differing ideologies can come together for the pursuit of di diplomacy. Together by building mutual trust and confidence, we can achieve that which has seemed impossible merely a decade ago. Today marks the beginning of a century of the common man. An age where every man, no matter his walk in life, can come together for a better world. No one can believe it. For the first time, people have come around to your diplomatic efforts with Soviets, and suddenly the idea of making peace with communists isn't brushed off as simple pie-in-the-sky ideals. Taft, who until now has convinced many his foreign policy was sound, finds himself at a loss for words and support. That has changed things big time. We are now in striking distance of a lot of places. Look at that. What's our... 
we're almost above 200 electoral votes. And if the election was voted right now, it would be contested because you need 266 to win, I believe. In the final session of Congress before Election Day, this might be your last chance to pass any meaningful legislation. What are you going to focus on? Well, this is my last opportunity to get things done. I'm going to go big or I'm going home. We'll push the Negro Rights Act, the U.S. Health Service, public housing, increased basic school support, the repeal of Taft Hall Harley, public new, new public works programs, a federal highway act, and universal basic income for mothers. We'll hit them with all these bills. I'll guess this one. I don't think, I don't know what that one is, but going with this one. Those cocksuckers! Congress just absolutely stonewalled every single piece of legislation your party proposed. Even the general public is dumbfounded at just how spiteful your opposition has been. Liberals are burning life-size e effigies of Taft and Thurman from New York to California. There we go. How are we doing now? We have the edge. We have the edge, boys. 270 to 180 to 81. Where do we want to go? I think Pennsylvania is a bit more of an important push into Pennsylvania. With Mr. Dog Boat. Still don't know his name. Just thinks we're waffling around Irish Wild so hard while trying to win the American election. <laughs> election day only day away. Where do, you spend, where do you plan to spend it? And hopefully push a few states over to you. How are we doing now? We're actually really close in Virginia, which I'm surprised to see. I think we'll do the Mid-Atlantic. Yes, we do have much of it already in our pockets, but it, I think we could flip states like New Jersey. How we turn this around so well, Taff and Thurman really fucked themselves being weak catty cunts, didn't they? They really did. Let's not say anything yet. We need 266 to win. We'll do... We're heading Florida. We got the border states down. I think we'll have California. I think our bet is the Mid-Atlantic. The, uh, mid -Atlantic. Someone called wishful thinking, but hey, maybe you're on, on to something. At the very least, it helps secure places like New York. Luck has arrived. Settle in, wait for results, however long it may take. Best of luck. Let's see what we got. Six percent complete. 266 votes needed to win. Indiana's in. Not a surprise there. South Carolina and Vermont. Not surprised at those turns out turnouts at all. Who the fuck is Thurmond? He's a Dixiecrat. Uh, Kentucky. We've secured Kentucky. That's pretty big. Virginia kind of close, but I don't know if we... We'd probably have to dedicate some visits. We got West Virginia. We got Mass, Rhode Island. Tennessee is coming. 73, 51, 50. Not too bad. The Midwest is going red so far. Same with the uh, Middle America. We got Minnesota. New York, that's a big one. We got Texas, too. Ooh, shit, we don't have Florida. That's rough. We don't have Delaware, either. God, Delaware was close, though. Fuck. I don't think we can win this. Midwest worries me. We got Iowa. We weren't going to win these anyway. I was betting on these three states. That kind of fucks us, honestly. We can't win at this point. Versus Democrats, makes sense, yeah. Um, We got Montana. How the fuck? We were leading in these places, too. God, we just, we got shitty RNG there. We got shitty RNG. Versus Democrats, yeah. Damn. 
For a moment, it seemed as if you could pull through. Barkley's surprise choice to join your ticket after tragic death of Falfer seemed like Josephine would reunite your chance at re-election. Instead, even with your united party, or, or as much as possible, you've been thoroughly defeated by Taft and Republicans. Now, Barkley's choice to join you may have become the very thing that sinks his career. I'll read your calls from the SRP to House of Kentucky Senator from power for any chosen of reunification as possible. Although many moderates hate to see it happen, even more are willing to stab the man in the back for political gain. Stop the count, vote is rigged. Despite your rough battle in the primary, you find yourself feeling nothing but regret forcing Barkley in this position. Perhaps someday you may have the opportunity to pay the man back for his loyalty, but right now all you can do is try to work behind the scenes to keep him in power before, no doubt, a segregationist can take control. In the end, you really did have no chance, and you may have just sunk the moderate wing as well. It's your closest states. Oregon was close, shit. New Jersey. California, fuck me. All of these were just really close. Rerun the tapes. We're doing it again. But yeah, I'm um, Dixiecrats. Because okay, I'll I'll do some history real quick on how the Democrats worked. Um, the Democrats uh, throughout like the like the 1900s up until like the 70s or 80s. It still went on a little bit to the 90s with Clinton. You had the Dixiecrat, you had Southern Populists and Northern Union people. That was the base of a Democratic Party. Uh, they mostly agreed on economics and stuff like that. The main thing they disagreed with was social issues and mainly race. So the Southerners were the Dixiecrats. So they're broadly in favor of stuff like the New Deal and stuff like that. But they're also really into the whole racism thing. So that's kind of a... It was a weird alliance. Um, do do do. Visit New Jersey. Call Congress into session. Go to Florida. Do nothing, fix nothing. I swear, I, I've done this path before and it ends up working pretty well. Then the Republicans were mostly Northern Progressive side. Didn't they also have some weird wings too? Uh, there, it was kind of complicated. Um, the Republicans were always kind of a business party, but you had the liberal Republicans. Um, Mitt Romney's dad, uh, George Romney, was one of them. Um, Nelson Rockefeller, he was a uh, governor of New York. A uh, big billionaire, but pretty liberal on social issues. Not entirely conservative on economics either. You did have some weird dynamics going on there, too. Even, like, Nixon. He was a pretty moderate guy. He passed, like, OSHA, which is, like, our regulatory bodies, or the Environmental Protection Agency. It was really around Reagan where you had this hard shift away towards the Republicans being the really conservative party. Do do do, 2054. I swear this has worked for me before. As soon as I start recording it, I just get bad luck. Yeah, you're not wrong there, Zar Evan. 
I don't think you're wrong there at all. Send him to Korea. Send him after the KKK. Do campaigns in the South. Federal Highway Act for Warren. Francis Biddle. That has to help us. It kind of does. Back to Cali. Piss off Arizona, but that's all right. Go after Taft. And there goes Kefaufer. Feels bad. Go back to Penn. Peace in our time somehow. Have them shoot all our stuff down. Is this going to do it for us? We're doing a little bit better, generally. We'll do the Deep South. See if we can flip Florida. South as a whole is not receptive. You do manage to get some sizable crowds in Georgia, Arkansas, Florida, and especially Texas. Maybe we can pull it off. Let's see, boys. Let's see. All right, take two. I think you only really did one different decision, which was the campaign at the end. Kentucky flipped over a lot quicker than last time, which I think bodes better for us. Hey, listen, man, I'm I'm working with what I got. Kev says he feels this. I think I feel it too. Got New York. A lot of New England we got. Texas we got. No Florida, though Florida was close. Fuck, we don't have Jersey, god damn it. Or Maryland. Motherfucker. A man should win Florida before, I swear. We got Cali this time. We've deadlocked the election. This would actually be a cool way to uh, show off, because they're actually different endings. Okay. The result that will leave, surely everyone on all sides reeling, not only have you managed to not be completely embarrassed, but you've even gotten the entire thing thrown to the house. Well, normally Thurman and his traitor snakes have, may have been overjoyed, they're most certainly not when it comes to how things have seemed to end up. In this contingent election, should the House be unable to vote on preferred candidate, as of the case so far, considering the animosity and lack of cooperation on any side, this would leave the role of president between Everett Dirksen and Alvin Barkley in the Senate vote. Already you can see many of your party ready right usher in the era of Barkley, not to mention a sizable chunk of both Republicans and states' rights members more than willing to compromise with a likable moderate like good old Alvin. Sitting in your office looking at results, suddenly the idea that Barkley had planned the result all along hits you like a ton of bricks. That damn old man played you for a sucker. So we've still got a Democrat in office, just not our Democrat. Delaware was close, too. Alright. Gonna roll back one more time.
I also have some music there, but I don't think I can. I don't want to risk playing it in case of the copyright strike. How this game works is that it kind of it's sort of RNG based. So it's supposed to add a little bit more dynamic. Kind of cringe Thurman basically rebuilt the Confederacy. It is. Um, so how this game works is that there's a little bit of RNG uh, behind the scenes. The answers, I think, have pretty set RNG behind them. But the game in between will change up the, the polling a little bit. Just some numbers here and there. From my understanding on how it works, so we'll change up, we'll campaign with in a lot more. We'll just abandon Florida. It's a free website. Um, just go to newcampaigntrail.github.io. And you'll be good. It's totally free. And th there's a crazy good modding community. The modding community is amazing on this. Like, this is a mod. This isn't part of the main game. can do a Trump Obama ticket. It's a fucking I got to play that for the channel one of these days. It is awesome. Come to Korea. I'll do one more visit in Jersey. <laughs> Mr. Talkboat versus Kanye. Oh boy. See if that helps us at all in the south. I'm tempted to go back to the south, but um, hmm. doing okay generally here. Send a visit to Maryland. I swear. Um, do another visit to Maryland. R.I.P. How are we looking? California, just in case. I'm 
Mid-Atlantic blockbuster election. That'd be funny. I do own it. I, I just haven't played CK3 at all. I don't think I've... I actually haven't played it much at all. Come on, game. It's fucking... This is a rough mod. At least playing, you know, Wallace, it's a really hard mod. Which I do enjoy that. Look at that boy, is that dinner filled a hole? You're making me hungry now, Kev. Dang it. Okay, we got Jersey. We got Maryland, finally. As long as we get Penn, I think we're good. We got Pennsylvania. If we can secure the West Coast, we should be okay. It's looking good. Oregon. Yeah! Mmm! Mmm! Suck it, Taft! Suck it! Oh man, we could have even flipped Florida, god damn it. And we got Nevada too. 175 to 289 to 67. Let's go. These last few months have served to be one of the wildest rides of your life. Heck, your entire relationship with Senate Minority Leader and soon Vice President Alban Barkley is a perfect representation of that. At the beginning, you. Uh, the two of you were duking it out for the nomination. Then after the death of Estes, suddenly you found yourself shoulder to shoulder, pulling out a gutsy win over both the SRP and Republican parties. In a way, it almost feels surreal, like this couldn't be happening. But it is, and despite your previous animosity, the two of you currently sit together watching the news of your victory, with a glass of wine in each of your hands. As soon as the results are called in, the both of you downy shots. <clears throat> almost wish I didn't have to leave the Senate. Would have lacked being majority leader again. There's still time, Alvin. You quit back. For the rest of the night, the two of you just celebrate this momentous occasion. Although there's still much work to do, at least you can be glad the party's starting to sew itself back together. Congrats on the win, man, but I'm going to sleep now. Enjoy the time stream. Thanks for joining me, Zara Evan. And thank you all for joining me. Let's see. So this is the apparent official election results. Got some further reading. And we want to check it out. And then, closest states. We could have gotten a, a visit in Florida, and that would have gotten us. Nevada. North Carolina was closer for, for Thurman than it was for us. Delaware was very close. Pennsylvania. Probably got that with all of us visits in Pennsylvania, honestly. The last trip to the Mid-Atlantic really d helped us out. But look at that! Now that is beautiful. Now I have a feeling with uh, better RNG, he could definitely win Florida. He could potentially even win Virginia. Um, depends on how you distribute the visits, of course. Utah is actually surprisingly close. That's interesting. But that's it for now, my friends. Thanks for hopping in. Uh, excellent mod. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I might actually play it again with a different candidate one of these days. Um, Thurman has a pretty spicy VP option, I'm not going to lie. So that seems kind of funny. But, yeah, I'm leaving it there for now. It does. It does work on mobile, which is cool. But, yeah. I'm in it there. Thanks so much for watching, gang. Like if you like, just like if you didn't. If you have any comments, feedback, leave in the comment section below. I read all the comments again. Appreciate any old feedback right out for me. Especially, uh, if you have any recommendations for mods to play, I would very much like to play them. So just let me know. Uh, what else? Um, 
Hit the sub button if you want to keep up to date. I mainly do Paradox games, but I like to do new campaign trail occasionally. That usually goes up on Saturdays. I have mainline series going through the weekdays if you want to check those out. And yeah, check out my various links. Uh, Twitch, which I film these on. Uh, Discord. My second channel, my Patreon. All those d links are down in the description box below, so check them out if you're interested. And that's really it for now, my friends. My name has been Mr. Dogbot 323. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Also, funny dementia reference.